good. And um, Mikael, before the break, there was a lot of discussion about Emil Smith Rowe not getting into the England squad. Fast forward a week, he makes his debut and scores. How proud are you of him? And also, how much is he now justifying that number 10 shirt? Well, first of all, um, I was surprised because it happened uh, just after the game, but um, I was extremely happy for him. Um, I know the expectations that he had, a lot of talk around it, and um, and he really enjoyed it. I saw him yesterday, he was delighted to score a goal for the country. It's always something special, and um, he made us proud, not for only for him, but uh, to see as well Bukayo and Aaron starting for the national team, I think it's a great sign for the club. Arsenal also take on Liverpool this weekend, but you're also the most unbeaten side in the Premier League so far this season. Will this game be your ultimate test? Well, it's always a test. Um, it's a fascinating stadium uh, to play football. Um, you have to be at your best. Uh, you have to raise the level to your maximum standards, emotionally, physically, technically, tactically, because if you don't, uh, you get exposed. And... Um, and to what Anfield is always a test. Um, but again, if you are able to do that as well, there are not that many grounds as good as that uh, to feel that you are a, a proper footballer. What have you made of Jürgen Klopp's side so far this season? Well, it's difficult to judge just on the season because what they've done in recent years. Um, I think uh, Jürgen and the staff have managed uh, to to bring the club to the best moments in, in their history and to sustain it, which is probably the hardest thing to do. So they have transformed, first of all, the energy around the place. Um, I think the cohesion and the energy they have created uh, on that stadium is something special. And Jürgen has done that in other clubs that he's been, so it's a talent that, uh, that he has. And, um, and they have built from there, and obviously they've been extremely successful. Lastly for me, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has applied more pressure than any other striker in the Premier League this season. He said he's got the best job in the world as a captain as well. Um, how do you combine those two just to get him scoring a little bit more and to make him maybe top goal scorer this season? Keep doing the same because uh, he's getting in great position, he's having chances and, um, and things will happen there. again. He already scored quite a lot of goals. Um, we always demand more and we want more. But uh, he needs to continue the form that he's in, the attitude that he's showing, um, and as well, the level of implication that he has, not only around the team, but around the club as well. Thank you, Mikhail, and good Thank luck you. for the week. Thanks, Rebecca. We'll move to Gary from Sky, who's in the room with us. Thank you. Um, on Pierre, uh, he came back early from his international break. Was that pre-planned? Was it because of such an important game coming up this weekend? No, it wasn't pre-planned. Um, we have to assess him and see how he is um, and make decisions. We have a lot of players that they've been through some different games, um, issues, little injuries. So um, today we have to test everybody and see how, how we are to play tomorrow. But as far as you're concerned, he didn't come back because of any particular injury. Let's see how everybody is. Uh, we have to see them today before assessing and, and making a judgment on how everybody is. And how's Thomas Party? Same again. He could not uh, play for the national team. Uh, he really tried to do that because obviously they had a massive game and, um, and he really pushed for that one. But um, he wasn't close enough to do that. Um, and again, it's something that um, we have to assess today because till today he hasn't done enough. Obviously, you spoke about what a good international break it was for your young uh, English players. In terms of Aaron, is it about time he started more regularly for England, do you think? Well, I don't know. He was given the chance and I think he took the chance and uh, he shows the progress and uh, the quality that he's shown in, in their performances because at the end they trusted him to, to put that shirt on and, and start for England, which is uh, a big thing. So I'm delighted for, for him. Congratulations on your form. You've spoken about the, the unbeaten run and the number of wins in that in that unbeaten run. Is is that a real boost going into such a big game? Are you, can you tell that your players are now really confident and feel that they can go to Anfield and, and achieve something? They are confident. They are in a good um, form. Um, 
but they know that every game is different and uh, and we have to go game by game and uh, this is a long run the premier league is a, such a long competition and uh, you're gonna have different moments but obviously we're going to maintain the moment maintain the form and the best to do it is just perform at the highest level which is what you have to do in the premier league and for sure at anfield to go there and um, and win the game and how much of an incentive is it not that you need an incentive of course but if the result does go your way you, mm. you go into the top four well, that would be that would be the objective. Uh, the standards that we have to show in this club, the ambition is every day to win the game. It doesn't matter where you play; you have to prepare the game to win it, and that's the way we're going to do it: to go to Anfield and um, and get the results. Has the target for the team changed in the past two to two and a half months because of this run that you've been on? I mean, can you now even think? beyond the top four, top three, top two, top one? The target is always linked to the expectations of this club, which is to be the best, always to be the best. It doesn't matter where you compete, who do you compete, um, in what moment or what project you are, it's always that demand. And uh, that should not change because um, it's attached to our culture, our ambition. And every player that is here has to be thinking that tomorrow is the most important day and we have to win the game and the rest will take care of themselves. But do you think it's a three-horse race for the title or could it now be a four-horse race with Arsenal involved? I don't know what is going to happen. No one can predict it. Uh, this league has given a lot of surprises in recent years to everybody. So, um, again, from our side, we know what we have to do. We know where we were, where we want to be, and the best way to do it is, is go day by day by game. I've got two more, actually, very quickly. Last okay. time um, Arsenal won at Anfield, they went twice, I think, in 2012, March and September. You were in the side both times. Mm -hmm. and Maybe uh, a little bit of an omen there? I hope so. Uh, it's been a while, as you mentioned. Um, so it's, it's time to do it again. And um, I have experienced both, winning and losing. And I know why you lose and why you lose matches at Anfield. And, uh, and which is the mindset and emotionally the preparation that you need to go there, convince and make sure that you are at the races to compete um, on that stadium. And finally, from me, a, a former Rangers man, your view on their new head coach appointment? Well, I obviously it was a surprise. First of all, as a Rangers fan as well, I must say that um, thank you so much to Stevie and the coaching staff for what they did for the club uh, because they turned the club around in, in such a difficult moment and to manage to, to win the league in the way they did it um, obviously was a big boost. Um, Football is like that. People want to move. People had other expectations, and now just um, I wish the best to to Giovanni and um, and the club and and see what happens. Thanks, Gary. We'll say George from the BBC. Thanks, Dan. Mikel, good morning. Um, why can't Arsenal teams win in the league at Anfield? What's what's been the reason for for so many defeats in so many matches? Can you put your finger on it? Do you think it's in the players' heads? I don't know. Obviously, the quality of the opponent has a big say. Uh, it's not a coincidence. Uh, last year as well, before we went to Old Trafford, it was, uh, I don't know how many years, before we went to Stamford Bridge, the same. But um, first of all, you have to believe that uh, you go there and, and you can beat them. That's the first thing. If somebody is not with that mindset, you should not put the shirts on and, and go to Anfield tomorrow. And, uh, and then, as I said, you have to race individually your game to your best, emotionally, physically, technically and tactically. You have to be able to suffer in the right moments because there are going to be moments that you're going to have to do that. And then as a team, uh, you have to have very clear ideas of, of what you have to do on that pitch to, um, to beat that side. Do you believe you can beat them tomorrow? Yes. And what reasons? Is for all them reasons you said? Well, the reason that I said, um, what I see, and because uh, if not, there's no point travelling. And uh, you always have to find the reasons uh, to believe that your team um, can go there and, and beat them. Have you got a special plan to stop Mo Salah? We have a plan like every week with the strengths and weaknesses of every team that we have to minimise and expose uh, the weaknesses that they have. And do you think this is possibly going to be Ramsdale, Ben White, Gabriel's 
toughest test since they've all been together with your new back four that this is going to be their toughest test it's one of the season. toughest places to go in the league that's for sure um for the environment for the energy that the stadium creates for the quality of the opponents uh, for the quality of the coach that they have for many reasons that's what they've been where they've been in the last um few years um but we know that and, um, and we have to focus on what we can do and, and what we have to do and you talk glowingly of Anfield. Is it your favourite stadium to play at? One of your favourite stadiums to manage at? What is it about it that you like so much? That you really feel as a footballer, um, you are in a place where, where you really have to give your best. Um, and when you do, it's an incredible feeling because you have overcome a really difficult and challenging situation. And when you don't, like it had happened other times, uh, after you feel regrets for things that you haven't done or you should have done differently or you haven't approached the game in the right way. So um, I think it's, um, it's one of those places where you have to go there and, and believe on the day that you have to show why you, you want to play football. And is Uber still on penalty duties if he does play tomorrow? <laughs> we will make those decisions in regard to, to what we want to do. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, George. We'll go to Nick from Haters. Morning, Mikel. Good to see you again. Um, just talking about the, the England lads in particular coming back from international duty, have you noticed a sort of a, a lift in confidence? Can it be good for the club that they're all now playing for the senior team? Well, I see that as a reward. And... And in Emil's case, obviously, because it was his first time, and not only what he's doing on the pitch, but the maturity that he's showing to handle many different situations that have occurred very, very quickly for him in his career in the last uh, few months. And um, I just see enjoyment and, and happiness. And obviously, for them to be bonding together in that environment, in that elite environment, um, I think it's, it's very, very beneficial. And obviously, Emil and Bakayo came through the, the now famous Hale End system. And before you've had Ainsley Mate and Niles playing for England too. What did you know? How much, how well did you know about the youth academy here before you came back as manager? And how important was it to you to know what was going on there? Well, I knew about it because of my time here as a player. And I, I seen already some of the, the talent um, come through and, and, and I play with, with some of them. And... Uh, it's part of our identity uh, to raise players. Um, we have a great academy. We have coaches that deserve so much credit uh, for education that they are giving those players, and then for um, how they have been coached. And then it's about like anybody. They need opportunities. They need game time to prove that um, that they can do it at that level. When you were away at Manchester City, do people talk about the Arsenal academy? Where does it rate compared to say City or Chelsea or, or Liverpool's academy? I cannot rate comparing to others. Uh, what I can say that is that I'm really happy and proud and um, that this is not a stopping here, that we have to continue to evolve it, to improve it and, and keep providing players because uh, it's, uh, it's a huge boost for the club and obviously because uh, it's very beneficial for many, many aspects. Okay. When, when you're looking to improve the squad or the team, do you look to the transfer market first or do you look to see who you've got coming through ranks? Always in our system, but whether it's a player, whether it's a, a staff member, whether it's in any part of the club, we need some recruitment. First of all, we look inside what we have, can we promote them, how they have the qualities to do it. And if we don't, then obviously we have to start the process outside um, our club. Okay, just a couple of quick questions on, on recruitment or, or squad size, etc. I saw that there was a story that Alex Lacazette might be offered a, a one-year contract before uh, January. Is that, is that right? What's happening there? I don't know. There is so much talk. What I can say is I'm really happy with um, what Laka is doing at the moment. And I said that we're not going to be talking about any of that uh, till the end of the season. OK. And, and last year you had a bit of a, a sort of a clear out, a bit of a change around in, in January. And I also saw reports coming from Turkey, sorry, from Egypt rather, that Mohamed Elneny might be uh, released, uh, his, his contract terminated at the beginning of the year is that right again i cannot go again i'm really happy with with more you know that will be discussing individually all the players and and it's no time to do so okay, Nick, okay. thanks thanks, so thanks anyway thanks Thank for your you. time that ends the broadcast session guys we'll now move on to 10 30 friday embargo kick off with uh, 